Now that we are living in the consequences of our refusal to listen concerning undertaking further national elections under the fraudulent constitution of Nigeria, 1999, Ninas comes to you first looking back at how we got here so that we can begin to navigate our way around the storms that are still racing towards us. We haven't seen the worst of what will, what, what will come from going to election in 2023 under that uh, constitution that guarantees uh, evil. It will be recalled that sometime in December of 2022 by a broadcast titled We Either Abort the Electoral Flight the 2023 Election or we watch Nigeria collapse, crash. I repeat, by broadcast of December 6, 2022, titled, We either abort the 2023 electoral flight or we watch Nigeria crash. Nina's did plead with did warn, did tell our people that Nigeria had come to that point where things were so charged, like uh, there were low intensity fires all over the place, and that going to election will pour fuel into that situation and it will become an inferno. For all of those who are now very hungry, for all of those who are being slaughtered in the manner that had not happened before across the middle belt for all of those who are now looking for where to run to for in a nigeria that uh, is uh, that in a nigeria that, it, that has an economy that is on a free fall currency that is on a free fall everything that has gone wrong now flowing from the fact that we went to that election at the time we should have been going to transition and there's no bottom to that fall that is there's no, there's no, not, not, nothing you can point to to say this is beyond this, it won't get any worse. No, it can only continue to get worse until Nigeria itself is, uh, you know, just, uh, it's no more. And the Nigerians who are already dying, because uh, the, the union died a long time ago, but the uh, people are still wearing the, the mask and uh, driving the carcass around and killing more people. Our concern, the Nina's concern is for Nigerians. The Nigerians trapped in that carcass of that dead and defunct Federation of Nigeria. You can see the numbers that are dying now. You can see the numbers that are in distress now. And since all the, all the factors that will have uh, worked together to pull them out of their misery are only pushing them further down, there's a responsibility upon them, the Nigerians themselves. There's a responsibility to, to, to put on your thinking cap, put, you know, open your ear, and your heart to listen to understand why you are where you are. So that if there's still something that can be done, like Nina says, yes, to avoid getting to the worst that is still ahead, or you think this thing will blow away? No. <laughs> your Naira is on a journey. You don't know where that journey will. That was how Zimbabwe's uh, journey began with its currency. And all the ones we saw, we saw uh, uh, was the one uh, next to. Uh, uh, the, 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 the U.S., uh, where, where their currency has become uh, something they can't, uh, you have to carry a quantity bigger than the pot you want to use to cook, to be able to make a pot of soup. The, the currency you need will almost fill that pot. And so, we come back to what has happened has happened. We saw how the election went. We saw how the constitution was uh, abandoned by the Supreme Court and the executive branch. They trampled on that constitution, you know, waiving the 25% required by that constitution. That means that constitution is dead even by their own uh, action. And look at where it has landed you. Look at the kind of, look at the kind of uh, president and uh, government you have got and all of what they are doing and how you are faring in it. So this broadcast is to, even, even more recently, let's remind ourselves, that there's one we called a short broadcast, I think it was three minutes. We said, ahead of 2023 
elections under the 1999 constitution, Nina's warning of their, their consequences, Nina's warning of their consequences. We told everybody that these things are going to happen to them. They didn't listen. But is Nina's now rejoicing? We told you so. No, far from it. We are pained by the, by the number of deaths, the number of dislocations, the, the quantum of misery that have been unleashed by the journey that was undertaken, the going to election in 2023 under the concern of 1999, you, there was nothing else to expect. And that was why we were, Ninas was shouting from the rooftops for those three years. Don't go. The men of God in the land were busy mobilizing their flock to go and get PVC. Get your PVC. Some said, if you don't have the PVC, don't come to our church anymore. We were telling them, this battle is for AK-47. You are mobilizing your flock to go and get plastic card issued by the enemy that is upon them to kill them. On election day, they discovered, you know, to their shock, that the battle they were coming for was one of uh, metal, AK-47. Metal, called AK-47. All of that have come and gone. Those men of God, we do not see them We've not seen them. We don't. We we we, we can't hear what they are saying now. Even now that we are saying we must go to transition, let all of those who mobilize for PVC at the time we are telling them it ought to be transition, not election. Can they go back to the pulpit now and and join in the demand for transition so that we can go and sort out the union dispute before the flock will die to the to the last. You are living in your comfort. The people you mobilize to election are living in the consequences of that election. The purpose of this broadcast is, for, is to tell the Nigerians, those who are living in this misery, misery, that the same people that dragged you to that election, that has brought you to where you are now, are already mobilizing you to come with them to 2027 under that same constitution. If you, if, you, if you become docile enough, if you become dumb-headed enough not to ask those rallying you towards 2027, P2B, under which constitution are you going to take us to production? P2B, under which constitution are you going to take us to Eldorado? Because if it is this constitution, 36 states will remain. Seven and seven local government areas will remain. Meaning that Nigeria will still be financing 812 governments every month, even if Peter becomes president. If he's under this constitution, 68 items of exclusive lists will remain. Meaning that your economic assets will still remain in the hands of the oil and gas of Niger will remain the Niger Delta, Niger Delta will remain the property of Jigawa people. The ports of Lagos and the, and the bitumen of Ondo and the, all of the limestone of Benue will remain in the hands of those to whom it's been allocated as concession or a block. So, we are saying, even the 2023 presidential election that you think is gone, the five-point proposition of Dinas is the only viable remedy to the four things happening to you right now. The Fulani Conquest agenda is still in full flight, in full force. You can see the number of places they're overrunning. Unless we go to that transition, because in going to that transition, we are collectively putting aside the constitution that brings them to our space. It is this constitution that brings the Fulani to your space. Whatever you see them doing, whether they are killing you or expropriating you, if we, if, we, if we go to that, if, if this announcement is made today, like South Africa made in 1990, that the apartheid constitution could not carry the society any longer. That is what Ninas is inviting everybody who is crying about anything and everything in Nigeria. That's the action we can take now. That's the re re remedial action available for us to convert the outcome of 2020 pres 2023 presidential election into a transitioning with that constitution at the center as something that has to be dismantled and reworked according to the agreements reached.
by the constituent components. components. You have a choice to block your ears like you did ahead of 2023 and proceed to election in the hope that uh, magic will happen, miracle will happen. Or you can be sensible this time and say, this constitution can only bring us more death, more misery. Let us go to transition to get it out of our lives and rework our union in a manner that brings back life, in a manner that brings, out, brings back production, in a manner that brings back security. You are not going to see anything different in security. Arms and ammunition remain on that exclusive list. The ones who are deceiving themselves about state police, the president, that six governors, are going to pass state police. Which state? These states you see were not created to take care of you. Otherwise, they would have been mandated differently. What you have in black and white in your constitution, find out any lawyer who have been deceiving people in your neighborhood and confront them with the question of section 6, subsection 6 of the 1999 constitution for them to tell you whether under that provision the government owes the citizen any obligation at all for security, for welfare, for equal treatment, for education, for healthcare, whatever, everything you thought the government owed you. That section says it is at the discretion of those in government house to decide whether they do for you or they don't. And if they don't, you have no legal recourse against them because the jurisdiction of the court is removed from listening to you. So you can't even, they don't, it's not a legal obligation in that sense as you thought. And so, we are inviting you to, 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 to step forward from docility, step forward from ignorance, step forward from timidity. Sovereignty belongs to you. All of what you need to do to rescue yourself from this carnage, from this misery, is only to say no more under this constitution. We must go to transition. The ones who are planning to do labor union that will go to do protests and the other ones who are planning all kinds of revolution, what you need to do with all that energy is to insist on transitioning now so that this constitution can be put out of the way which license all of what has been happening to you, whether it's the full and invasion or the economy that has been hijacked by state captors, people who are just capturing the state for their own purpose. We have seen it. Everything they are doing is to paralyze you. You think they don't know you are suffering? They know you are suffering. We know the kind of characters that are taking this decision to increase your suffering so that you are not able to organize yourselves. This hunger that you are facing is a part of the containment strategy of your government. Otherwise, go find out why they announced withdrawal of uh, fair subsidy. What has happened now? Are we still in subsidy or are we not? The subsidy has multiplied more than five times the, the one they say they are withdrawing. The corruption has grown exponentially from what it used to be. The Naira is falling freely. You are the one living with the consequences of, of not knowing the price to any, anything you are told in the marketplace is what it is. What is pushing down the Naira in this manner? We had about 77 trillion ways and means. Central bank governor printing paper and handing over to Buari and his co-travelers. It becomes this called Naira, 77 trillion. To tell you what one trillion is, one trillion is one billion Naira into 1,000 places. Not 10 billion, not 20 or 50 billion. One trillion alone is one billion Naira into 1,000 places. And so when you begin to talk about two trillion, five trillion, 10 trillion, and the one they are discussing, the one they wrote a letter to National Assembly about uh, how to, uh, uh, you know, account for, uh, you know, not even account for, how to document it and uh, frame it. They've already spent the money. 
They say it's 23 trillion. Central bank say no, that there, there's a commission there, we pay them on top of it, so it's 30 trillion. Now, the factors driving the, dim, the collapse of the Naira is the fact that, it starts with the fact that 200 million people, the petroleum products that will service them have to be imported, and you have to pay in dollar. Why are we importing? Because this constitution locks down the capacity to refine in its exclusive list. That's the only reason we're importing petroleum programs. The question of uh, national, the four refineries that are not working by product of the same provision, because it is on account of that exclusive list that the federal government is the sole provider of refining for all of us. So the four refineries are shut down. Them and their cronies proceed with importing for you. And you buy your, the, when they import in dollar, you have to pay in Naira as you buy at the pump. They gather the money. By the time they go back, all the other pressures on the, on the dollar, on the Naira, will have uh, brought it down to where it can no longer buy what it used to buy. What are these pressures? The governors gather every month. They are now sharing in trillion. The governors gather every month to collect humongous sums of money. You had a uh, you know, uh, more, more or less squealing on the, on the governors. Uh, uh, about 30 billion they were given each to provide uh, some palliative of food. We have become an imaginary economy. Go buy them some beans there. Buy them some, some, some uh, masa, some, some kind of uh, rice. Uh, you know, just uh, give them, they will come with their plate in the morning. That's what Nigeria has become. A country that... A country that should be, you know, the, 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 a country of vibrant people with fertile land and fertile minds that could compete with the rest of the world. We have been locked down by a 68 item exclusive list in our constitution that takes away electricity, takes away all the infrastructure, takes away every means of production. How are we going to become a productive society if our constitution is the reason we can't? And so these governors collect all this money every month. Once they pay salary, some of the, that's for the ones that choose to pay at all, which doesn't come to more than 5-10% at the most. Everything they do legitimate for, to run their place, it, it depends on how much they get, but it's all between 3-5, no more than 10%. That they, the rest is their money. What do they do with that money? They go in search of wherever you bring, no matter the quantity of dollar you bring. As long as we have this regime of Naira that is floating freely, looking for dollar because it's corruption we are paying for they go and buy the dollar you go and borrow three billion dollars even if you borrow 20 billion dollars they have printed the enough naira they've stacked it waiting for any dollar that will turn up because it's when they buy it if, when they give you that useless paper and collect the the dollar of it that it becomes money they can go and spend in their foreign uh, abodes transatlantic places of uh, cruising, them and their children in private jets. And so it is that the pressure on the Naira is the fact that there is a humongous quantum of the Naira always available to chase after the dollar. So the manufacturer is not able to compete with these people that are printing the money and sharing among themselves. The people that really need the dollar, dollar for productive use can't assess it. You can see what's coming out from all the banks already. The banks are the midwives in, this, uh, in that crime of uh, ripping the society from all sides. Raping the society. Them and the politicians know how to move through the system. So the Naira is constantly under pressure. The two most important factors is the volume of Naira in the hands of people who owe you no obligation. Therefore, they use the Naira to go and buy up the dollar. The second pressure point is the fact that you are importing this product. And so, you, you have to pay a Naira that is then go, taken back to that same market to buy dollar to be able to pay, because you must pay in dollar to import. The, if this constitution goes down today, what is there in refining? Is it not heating and cracking and extracting at various temperatures? 
Some of us, these things are not, are not a, a nuclear science to people who have been a, a, you know, a, in that industry. So there's not anything at all to, to, to process and get out the products. So you conserve the money that will have been... That's where, where, where do you get all the kind of money to be doing all of that? And so, those who did not listen to us, and who went with the, with the ones who were trying to preserve Nigeria and its fraudulent constitution to election under it in 2023, if you cannot listen even now to insist on transition to get rid of this constitution, you can even be more foolish in saying, in 2027, we'll get it right. I'm sorry for you. We better pray. There was something we saw on Twitter the other day. Somebody who says that the daughter will be chased out of school. He was, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a mandate, uh, a stolen mandate uh, 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 juggernaut. Now he says his daughter will be chased out of school for a fee of uh, one point something uh, million naira. And uh, he's asking everybody, the people he was abusing, the people who were, who were saying that... Uh, they told him to go and forge certificates and leave uh, the, the school that is demanding million. Just a forge certificate and, and do, do, do. the man is doing well. Has he not approved to them? Those are the kind of answers. The man is in distress. But he was the one promoting the evil that happened. And so let us dress back. Let's be clear in our minds. If we choose, if it is, if it is our choice, to continue to construct Nigeria on the foundation of this fraud, to continue to construct Nigeria's democracy on the basis of this uh, atrocity, then we are inviting, we are saying that we are happy with everything that has happened and more to happen. But if we reject this constitution, if we reject this fraud, if we reject this torment, this is the time to move away from where we were traveling to election before, make a U-turn and come and join those who are saying this constitution must go, let us go to transition to work out what will replace it. Or let us dissolve the union. The constituent components will be more than able to take care of themselves and compete in the 21st century global community. We we'll stop there.